Hello. So today we'll be looking at uh, the beam reflection problem again. In fact, this video can be thought of as an extension of what we covered in our previous uh, lecture. So in the previous uh, video, if you if you remember, we were uh, using OD uh, an ODE function called BVP for C to solve boundary value problems. The problem that we solved previously was a beam reflection problem uh, in which uh, we we took a simply supported beam with uniform loading on it so today we'll be looking at the same uh, function bvp for c uh, the reason i'm covering that is i want to show you that with minimum changes to the code uh, you can solve for any type of beam problem using the same uh, bvp for c function uh, because um, the only thing that changes is the boundary condition when you go from one case of one type of beam to another with different loadings. The only things that change are the boundary conditions and the loading. These two things change and everything else remains the same. I mean, the governing equations remain the same. The governing equation which was d to power 4 q by ei, right? So these remain the same for all the types of beam problems. So for example, um, yeah, before we uh, proceed, uh, remember you have to remember this particular thing which I didn't specifically mention in the previous video but W means deflection then if you differentiate it once what you get is slope if you differentiate it twice you get what do you get you get the moment by so this is equal to M by EI moment by EI and if you differentiate it thrice you get shear force or let's call it yeah that be shear force by ei okay so um, this is the thing that you have to remember now let us take our old code which we wrote yesterday for a simply supported beam and let's use that let's take that and convert it to a case of cantilever beam let me just copy this so you can get to this code when you go to the video and look at the description let me copy it in a new file let me call it beam cantilever let me paste it okay so let's start making some changes to the code so what we have here is uh, uh, is a canty uh, what we have here is a code for a simply supported beam with uniform loading I want to change it to a cantilever beam with a point load at the end. So let's look at what type of boundary conditions with that particular problem have. So again boundary beam, let's search for boundary conditions because I don't remember. You can look for them in a book or you can just visit some websites. So yeah, for a cantilever beam, the boundary conditions are, are such, right? It says the deflection at, at the fixed end is zero, the slope at the fixed end is zero the double dash what is double dash uh, so the moment by ei at the uh, free end is zero and the shear by ei at the free end is zero so what it says is that when you have a load at the end of the beam the boundary conditions change to this right it is equal to the load at the end um, right so actually this should be uh, e by ei so i think he has forgotten what you need to because uh, i already i already showed you here the shear force is uh, the the triple uh, different derivative of w is equivalent to f by ei so the force divided by ei so the shear force at the free end will be equal to whatever force is acting there divided by ei okay so now let us make the appropriate changes in our code Remember, in order to understand this properly, you have to look at our previous video on BVP for C. So, yeah, let's, what do we do first? Let's change the boundary conditions. So, let's have a look here. The first one is W of 0 equal to 0, which means W of 0 is the, uh, the first one, the first unknown. So, YA1 equal to 0. So, this remains the same. W dash of 0 equal to 0. W dash of 0 is y a of 2 equals 0 
w double dash of l equals 0 so w double dash is y3 and uh, at l means yb of 3 that's equal to 0 and finally you have w triple dash at l equal to minus mg so w triple dash means this is 4 at l so that is yb equals mg actually it should be equals mg because uh, he's taking the shear force so when you bring it to the other side remember what i told you yesterday this is how we are writing the boundary conditions so when you have y of b at 4 equals some value right some constant so you you write that as y b of 4 minus c equals 0 and you input this part in the boundary condition function so i write this as the load okay so if let's change this so there's no loading here right there's no uniform loading so let me remove this all right and let me rename this as f so the uh, this will be f by ei as discussed earlier here right in this the shear force is given as f by ei so at the free end i'm saying that the shear force is equal to f by ei so i write the boundary condition like this okay so um and that should be enough should we do anything else yeah we need to change these equations these are for simply supported beam these two now i need to write them for um i need to write them for cantilever beam with a unit uh, with a point load at the end so beam uh, deflection table yeah. that should give me the values Uh, it is the first one so the deflection is minus fx square by 6 ci let me change it minus fx square by 6 ei times 3l minus x so 3l minus x right so minus fx square by 6 ei times 3l minus x and the second one is the slope equation is minus fx by 2 ei hmm. minus fx by 2 ei so let me change that minus f times x divided by 2 ei times 2l minus x so 2l So this should do now let me just run this open up octave and run beam cantilever i did not load the package so let's load it and run it again there's an error q q is not defined on line number eight on line number eight q okay um hmm so what I can do is instead of commenting this out, I can simply change it to zero because there is no uniform loading here. So let it run. Okay, it's taking quite some time. I'm going to pause it and wait okay before i could pause the equations got solved so as you can see we have got the uh, let me minimize this we have got the uh, deflection curve and the slope curve right and they match with the analytical solutions and if you can imagine this is how a beam would look like when uh, a cantilever beam would look like when loaded under a point uh, force at the end at the free end right so the whole point of this video was to show you how by making very small changes to the code i mean the only thing uh, the only changes that you have to make is at two places the first place is the loading right here i change the loading from a constant uniform load to zero and the second one that you have to change is the boundary condition so i change the boundary conditions here wherein I specified the shear force at the end. Remember the shear force at the end is given by the actual force that is applied divided by EI. So if your actual force is F, 
the shear force at the end would be F by EI right and then no no other change right this I only changed because I needed to compare so I changed uh, these two lines other than that there's no need the same equation the same thing works for both uh, both the cases that we saw in fact it, uh, you can take up uh, take it up as a challenge for you you can uh, you know just pick up any other type of beam from here let's say you pick this up right then you write the boundary conditions with respect to this you look at look them up in a textbook or you know try to figure them out on your own so for this beam you would write the boundary conditions which you think are appropriate and then you change the loading this is a uniform loading so this would be some constant here right and then you solve it that's the only thing that you need to do you specify boundary conditions you specify loading and then you solve with the same uh, set of lines and the, the code will work so this is it for today it was a short video uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.